Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Lednap Gaming. Today we're going to talk about Concierge and the Grey Market. As both of these deal with high dollar values, I do want to make sure to reiterate not to spend money you don't have on ships. Without further ado, let's get started. To begin with, let's talk about Concierge. For some of you, this may be the first time you've heard of this, so in short, it's a status reserved by CAG for players who spend more than a thousand US dollars on the game. It has a bunch of perks like early access to concept ships and sales, usually about 24 hours, and you get access to ship packages, probably the most useful part, uh, which are collections of ships sold seemingly at a discount. One of the actual tangible perks of Concierge, of course, is the private support, in which Concierge members can submit trouble tickets to a dedicated staff and they get a more personalized and immediate response. Concierge does have different tiers, which is often misunderstood by the community at large. And that means that some concierge members in higher tiers can request things from CIG that others can't. The next definition worthy of discussion is the gray market. This is a Reddit board where ships and whatnot are sold by players to players. This isn't a black market because it's semi-approved and unofficially supported by CIG, but you really are best to think of it as a black market. Unlike buying from CIG, when you send payment to the seller here, there's no mechanism in place to ensure that what you purchased ends up in your hangar. There's a couple other major downsides we're going to get to in a moment, but let's cover some other things you should understand about the gray. The gray market does go to great lengths to ensure honest trade takes place and that scams are minimized. That said, they certainly still happen. The mechanism for this is verified trades, in which both seller and buyer confirm to the board that the transaction correctly took place, and these trades are tracked. So, sellers with a large number of verified trades are generally honorable. Thus, the first rule is buy from established sellers. However, there are legit guys looking to break into the market or sometimes players looking to sell concepts or their account because they're leaving the verse and they want to get some money. The gray market has some great deals and certainly do shop around. Often, smaller sellers offer lower prices, so my advice here is know roughly what the ship should sell for. An Aquila for $100 isn't genuine, but one for $300 probably is. If a deal sounds too good to be true, it probably isn't. Aside from the non-receipt issue, there is one more potential thing to look out for here. Different sellers use different means to get their supply. Ideally, if you don't know the seller or have friends who know the seller, find one who offers protection insurance from CIG. As I previously mentioned, CIG doesn't technically condone the gray market, and the sole place those two normally come in contact is where the item is gifted on the RSI website from user to user. Generally speaking, this is perfectly fine, but you need to understand a different part of how CIG counts pledges before we go on. Each player makes a non-refundable pledge to CIG when they buy a ship. That pledge is always tied to the original owner. You can see in your account how much you've pledged to Star Citizen and things you buy from the Grey or that are otherwise gifted to you don't count towards that. We're going to get into that in a moment, but a critical part of this is to understand that each item, be it ship, livery, or weapon, is unique and can be traced back to the original backer who made the pledge that actually paid CIG. If in turn that player should dispute the pledge with their payment processor, in other words, get their bank to refund them, CIG is going to pull the pledge, regardless of what hangar it's parked in. Remember, your gray market purchases are not CIG approved or tracked. The same is true if someone used a stolen credit card, for example, to buy a bunch of ships. That's important because if someone sells their account to a gray seller and then attempts to get the money back from CIG, the seller's not responsible for the loss of the ship you purchase. However, some sellers do offer insurance against this with the purchase, saying if CIG should take the ship from you, they'll replace it at no cost. These sellers generally promise this because they vet their purchases, meaning they verify legitimacy prior to selling it to you. If a seller's not willing to do this, that doesn't mean they're shady. They have no obligation to do so, and some of the biggest sellers don't do this. Before going further, let's talk about the ship giveaway. Running until October 18th, 2019, you can enter to win the giveaway for a Drake Loot and Scoot package courtesy of Dark Peak Entertainment. This is the one that has the pirate library, by the way. To enter, all you have to do is be subscribed and comment on any video from the announcement video last week. Here's how to improve your chances to win. Comment on multiple videos. The more you comment, the more entries you have. Now, multiple comments on a single video count as one, but if you comment on each video released during this time period, you're going to get multiple entries. Now let's get back to the concierge thing. Gray market purchases don't count towards your total pledge to CIG. This means ships you buy in the gray don't count towards your total pledge, so they also don't count towards concierge. When you only have one or two ships and you buy your first ship on the gray, you really don't care about concierge, right? Whatever. I want a cat and I want it now. However, once you buy in a little longer, 
Say you get around $750 in your CIG account, you really do start to think about it. It begins to matter. Then that $300 purchase from the gray starts to kind of kick you in the pants. I know so many concierge backers today who said it didn't matter until they were close. And then they started caring, and I was one of those too. I want to begin the conversation about fleet management and how to really put together the fleet you want. To begin with, let's finish the gray market part of this. The best advice I can give you is don't buy holes in the gray market. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean don't buy that Caterpillar with LTI from the gray. That's a $300 pledge you're losing out on. Instead, buy a CCU for a Caterpillar from a Connie Andromeda. Now the $225 you're going to spend with RSI to get the Andromeda, which you can almost always buy, counts towards your pledges, and the $70 cost of the CCU is all you're actually out. The catch to this is the CCU on the gray is probably going to cost a little more than $70, but you're going to keep the bulk of that money in your pledge, which is good for you down the road. Likewise, you should use an LTI token probably to upgrade that Andromeda so that your gray market CCU has LTI. If you're not concierge, you're never going to be, and you hate large ships, this part probably doesn't matter. But down the road, understand LTI is on almost everything sold to concierge members. I'm going to use my experience to best explain this next part. Yours will almost certainly be different, but there's enough similarity for you to take this next round of tips and understand them. As time goes on, you're going to end up buying different concepts and ships. I grabbed an arrow at one point, I didn't care if it had LTI, because I felt all players need to have a light fighter just in case. I had a Ballista Snowblind because I wanted to do a review and they were flight ready. I had a Max that was my daily flyer and was my was CC'd from my original game package. And I also had a Connie Andro that happened to be a game package. And at some point I figured I'd turn into something as well. Only the Ballista had LTI. Most of these ships were sitting in the hangar gathering dust. One night I took the total melt value of all my ships and I realized as I did so that I could melt those ships that I wasn't really using and take the credit and pull a concierge package that included some of the same ships effectively and gain an, a Carrick with LTI. I also want to point out I did melt both of my starter packages because all of the concierge packages are game packages. I never bought the Squadron 42 add-on. I got it for free with my concierge pack. So that's just another reason that these concierge packs are going to save you money. While gray market ships don't count towards your total pledge, what they do count for is monetary value in their melt. So fear not, those purchases you've already made are fine. The crux of fleet building then lies here. Plan ahead. But don't worry that your purchases today hamper purchases tomorrow. There's certainly landmines along the way here, but get the ships you dream about because, at least for me, that's part of the reason you're playing Star Citizen at all. Now let's talk about some of those landmines. First up, the LTI trap. Now I've spoken at length about if you need or don't need LTI. That's a personal decision, however like I mentioned almost everything concierge comes with LTI. I personally have fallen on the line that once you're spending concierge levels of money, a permanence in your ships has value. However, having your dream ship with non-LTI can be fine along the way, because eventually you might upgrade that and retain that dream ship and gain LTI. What do I mean? Plan packages ahead, but leave your options open. Browse concierge packages, and you're going to find the same repeating theme. Most major packages include the same large ships. Many, for example, include the Starfarer. Odds are, if you upgrade at some point, you're going to end up with one. So along the way, should you buy a non-LTI Starfarer from CIG on, say, the anniversary sale? Don't worry, because the melt value is still there for your money, and eventually you could melt that Starfarer and gain one back that has LTI. I'm again going to use myself as an example, just because I think having something tangible is easier to understand. I purchased the UEE Exploration 2948 pack, which netted me the Carrick as I mentioned previously. I had melted my Max that had 6 month insurance and I gained back a Freelancer with LTI. For a few extra dollars, upgrading that Max restored the Max to the fleet and I gained LTI for its value, allowing me to add the Carrick. The Carrick I and others fully expect to rise in cost when it arrives later this year, meaning the value of this pack could actually go through the roof. I eventually took the Terrapin to a cat as well. Here's the catch though. I can melt any of these ships individually. Packages are group deals. You can upgrade the internal components all you want, but you can't melt them individually. The major pitfall to avoid here is be very careful which CCUs you apply where. This is the only sub $1,000 package that includes a Carrick. After that, the next package that has one is the $15,000 Praetorium pack. This effectively secures that if you want to keep a Carrick, this pack won't be melted. That traps every other ship in here to that standard as well. For example, the Caterpillar in this group is commonly found in most of the economic packages. The lesson here is, be wary of packaged LTI tokens and what ships you assign to which pack. 
I really want an Asperia Prowler, and I plan to CCU one. Though the cat is a staple in my fleet, I'll probably turn that into the Prowler. Why? Because the Prowler doesn't appear in any pack except for Legatus for $27,000. I know that my future plans, this pack is not going to be melted, so I can safely put a unique ship like the Prowler in it that I'm not going to melt down. The Caterpillar appears in a lot of the economic packs, so I'll probably get one when I upgrade an and buy an into another pack. This works with non-concierge packages too. I put my Banu Merchantman in my Argo SRV pack, which is effectively three LTI tokens. I should only put ships in this pack that appear in the Convoy pack, for example, because eventually I might melt this to gain back that Merchie and a couple other ships by getting that Convoy pack. If I put my Pirate Cat CCU in here, I'm going to lose the Pirate Cat in that process. This is a very important thing to consider when buying LTI tokens in packs. Take the Ranger Bike Sale, for example. A three pack which was sold, which was done specifically because CAG knew people were going to buy several of these bikes for tokens. The catch is the single bike versions were actually a better deal, even though you didn't save money by buying in bulk. Of the six bikes I purchased in the sale on Warbond, three were in a pack. Those three tokens are trapped together and will be melted together. The three individual bikes I purchased are individual tokens that don't require future proofing when I CCU them. If I melt one down the road, it doesn't affect anything else. This also impacts special variants. For example, melting my 315 and 325 wouldn't really be a big deal since they're in almost every pack, except I have anniversary edition libraries on them, and those are not going to be available again, so melting those is a no-no. Which of course again highlights the point. As your fleet grows and you purchase LTI tokens or CCUs you intend to apply, think long and hard about where you put them. When I CCU'd my merchantman into my SRV pack, I concluded it would never be melted. But I'm aware today that the value of the merchantman in my hangar is a large chunk of money. And that could actually put me over the threshold of the convoy pack someday. So as a result, I'm careful not to put a CCU in that same SRV pack that's going to delay me from melting it to get into that convoy pack. The other pitfall here is pack hysteria. When you first get total access to the packs, you start to think I need one of those, and one of those, and I guess I'll take one of those too. That pack there has a ship I want, so I should get that one, and then I'll just CC it. Look, it's all bad. Okay. However, the longer you go, you realize there's probably really only one or two packs that are actually designed for what you do in the verse. Take the Scoundrel pack, for example. I put this on my list of packs to buy because it's the only one with a Mercury Star Runner, and I really want that ship. I looked at it and I figured that it has a Cuddy Black, which I don't have, so that's a win, and it has a Caterpillar, which at the time when this went on my list, I didn't have one of those either. Three out of six ships in the pack, that's a 50% keep on the pack, which makes it a great deal, right? Not really. For starters, I have a cat in my exploration pack now because I needed one before I was ready to shell out the $700 for the Scoundrel pack. And even though I'm going to CCU that, the Caterpillar comes in a lot of other packages. Likewise, I came to realize the Star Runner is going to eventually replace my need for a Cuddy Black, even if it has less cargo. Similarly, the C2 Hercules is on my must-have list, and that's going to replace the need for the Caterpillar in my fleet. I also since have acquired a Pirate Cat, so the regular cat is completely redundant. Thus, this $700 pack was really only going to net me a $200 ship. I'm better off just CCUing one of my exploration pack ships, maybe the Freelancer Max, into the Star Runner. If I ever get a convoy pack, I'm going to get most of the ships that are in the Scoundrel package anyways, except the Star Runner. To summarize, buy the ships you think you're cool. Don't let future proofing worry you too much and be ready for your decision process to change. One of the best things I can suggest is talk with workmates, friends, or even comment here or on my videos or email me when it comes time to upgrade and we'll chat. Even global chat can be your friend. The final landmine perhaps is the most minor or perhaps the most major. It's really easy to look at all the amazing ships and want to put each one of them in your hangar. The more time you spend in the verse, I think you find what you really enjoy and what you really don't. You also begin to decide you don't need to have five ships that all have 500 SCU. That's just wanting to own all the ships. If the Star Runner does get the 90 SCU it's slated to get, it's going to replace both the Freelancer Max and the Cuddy Black for me. I recommend using the Fleet Viewer at Starship 42. Start planning out what you want your fleet to look like. Don't worry if it changes. And find ways to consolidate ships. I find when you can look at them like that, it helps you to kind of go, oh, well, these three ships all do the same thing, and I don't fly these other two, so I should just get this one. Keep in mind what ships are dirt cheap in game. For example, down the road, if I find a need for the Cuddy Black that I don't otherwise generally have, I'll just pay for it with UEC. 
So what's your dream fleet, and have you found any pitfalls I didn't mention? Let's talk about it in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like this video and our Facebook page. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I will catch you all next time.